Hello everybody, nice to have you back. In this video we're going to see our very first application of integer programming. So if you've been following the videos in the order they are listed in my Excel models playlist. Up to this moment we have worked on or looked at what's called linear programming optimization problems in which our variables represent quantities that can be fractional amounts, right? But there are applications where you would like or you want to represent quantities that are integral or whole numbered valued, right? For example, these could be how many cars you're making or it uh, could be a number of people, things that you can't break into fractions. So there are quantity variables that you may want to make integer and there is a special case of integer variables which are variables that can only assume two values a zero or a one these variables are known as binary variables and they are typically used to represent decisions of the form yes or no right so the zero represents no don't do this and the one represents yes do this and these are extremely common in real life applications so today we're going to start to look at problems with integer valued variables, especially the binary ones, and we're going to look at those first. And then in a follow-up video, we're going to see uh, also whole quantities that are larger than one and how to use them and how to combine them with binary variables as well. So let's take a look at a little story here to motivate this uh, and I'm calling this problem the a budget allocation problem you'll see later that by budget I mean something that could be a little more abstract than a specific budget uh, this problem is known historically as the knapsack problem if you have heard this term before uh, but essentially it boils down to being a budget allocation let's take a look um, Rodolfo Barreto, the marketing director at LOV Brazil, is deciding how to best utilize the advertising budget for one of his newest accounts. The client has provided him with $1,972,000 to spend and asked for the ads created by LOV to be placed on a variety of marketing channels. After some research, Rodolfo picked 11 candidate channels and put together the following table with their estimated exposure. So according to Nielsen, if I advertise, if I pay for the ad on you know, channel one, which is a TV ad, uh, it's gonna cost me $920,000. And it's going to expose my product to 800,000 people, okay? So for each of these decisions, these choices, should I advertise on this channel, yes or no? And that's why we need those binary variables, because each of these channels, we're assuming you can place an ad or not. It's a yes, no kind of thing. So each of these decisions has a benefit, which is the exposure, but also an associated cost. And we have an overall budget, which is given here. So we don't have enough money to advertise on all channels, but if you add up these values, you exceed your budget. So the decision is on which of them should we advertise so that we are within the budget, we don't spend more than what we have, and we maximize the good side of this, which is the exposure, right? So that's the idea of the story. So Essentially, what we have to do then is we have to have 11 yes-no decisions, 11 variables of the type binary. So let's take a look at the math real quick. So I make x1 through x11, and they represent whether or not to advertise on the channel of that number. So if x1 is 1, it means go ahead and advertise on channel 1. If x1 is 0, it means don't do it. Right? If this is the meaning of my variables, then I could write my total exposure formula as well. If you advertise on channel one, x1 is zero. Um, I'm sorry, x1 is one. So that means yes, you one times is 800, you get the 800,000 people. If you don't advertise on channel one, x1 is a zero. Zero times 800 throws away the 800, you don't get it, right? So if you multiply the binaries 
by each of the exposure amounts, they're essentially going to be a get or not get result, right? And if you add all that up, once you assign values to the x variables of either 0 or 1, you're going to be able to calculate what your total exposure was. Great. Likewise, we can calculate the expense, right? If you advertise, x1 is 1, 1 times the cost of advertising there equals the cost of advertising there. So 1 times 920 is 920. If you don't advertise, this is a 0. 0 times 920 throws a 920 away. So if you add up all of these terms, once you assign values of 0 and 1 to your x's, you're going to have your total expense, and your single constraint will say total expense on the left less than or equal to amount of money available. We're writing this without the three zeros because all of these amounts here on the left are in thousands of dollars. Great, so this is a very simple model in the sense that it has only one constraint plus the objective function. So let's go to Excel and then solve this to see what happens, right? So here in Excel, I created, you know, I typed in the data for every channel, the number, what type it is, what the reach is and what the cost is. This, these numbers came from the table. And in the gray box here, we have our 11 yes, no variables. So if you recall from the formulas that we saw just now, the objective and the costs are essentially take every x and multiply by their respective exposure number or cost number, right? So we could just write two sum product formulas here. To get the total reach, the total exposure, we could sum product the column of x variables. And I'm going to dollarize this because I want to copy this over to get the equivalent expression for cost. But for now, let's just multiply the x's with the reach or the exposure. And this will give me the expression that we're going to maximize. And if I take this and copy to the right, and that's the reason why we you know, put the data according to this layout, just make our lives easier. It doesn't necessarily have to be that way, of course. If we do this, you'll see that now you have every x times every cost, and this produces the left-hand side part of that budget constraint, right? That we saw in the math part. So in so inside solver, we have to say that the value in E13 has to be less than or equal to the value in G13. And this is pretty much it. We're done. So we can go into inside solver and do the following. Great. So the uh, cell that contains a formula to maximize or minimize is the total exposure or total reach D13. It's max because it's something good. The variables are the 11x variables from C2 through C12. And the constraint, according to the math, we have to say what you spend E13 is at the most what you have to spend in G13. Now, in principle, that would be the end of it. But because I need to tell solver that the variables in column C can't be fractional, I don't want you to tell me a half when I want to know should I advertise yes or no. And you say a half, what does that mean, right? Or a quarter. So I need to tell solver, by the way, I only want values of either 0 or 1 in these gray cells. And to do this, you do the following. On the left-hand side of the, of the constraint input form, you select what variables you want to make binary. In this case, I want all. In the middle, you choose here, instead of a symbol, you choose the word bin, which is short for binary. If you wanted these gray cells to be whole numbers, but greater than one, potentially, you would choose int for them, right? In our case, each channel is a yes, no. So we're going to choose bin. There's no need to do anything to the right part here. And you click OK. As we have been doing before, we can uh, also switch this to the linear solver because we continue to have all linear constraints. This variables no negative is also fine. But before we solve, we need to do one extra step. Again, 
The reason being we have integer variables in the model and the extra step is this, is a verification step. Go inside the options button, press it here, and verify the following things. First, sometimes by default, this box that says ignore integer constraints is checked. But in my case, I don't want to ignore, I want to enforce integer constraints on the variable. So I uncheck it, make sure this is always unchecked. Secondly, there's this thing called integer optimality percentage. And this is essentially a way for you to ask solver the following. Uh, I am okay with finding an answer that isn't necessarily the guaranteed best one. As long as you know that you are within, let's say, 5% of best or 1% of best, I am okay with that answer. Why would you ever do that? Well, the reason is, we're going to see in person in class, but briefly, is that problems with integer variables can take a very long time to solve. So one way around this is to simply ask for a good enough solution as opposed to a best solution. And in many cases, this good enough solution is already better than what people are doing in practice. The solution, that, let's say, they've been calculating by hand to apply in practice. So it could be very useful. But in our case, because this is a small problem, what I want to put here is zero to indicate I want a solution that is 0% away from best. Okay, so meaning I want the best solution guaranteed. Uh, finally, you know, since I've touched upon this, uh, if your problem is taking a long time to solve because it has integer variables, besides changing this number here to a positive number to allow for a uh, not best solution, another thing you can do is to impose a time limit. So let's say you have an hour to wait and you want solver to look for the best answer it can within an hour, you can click on this max time here in seconds and say if an hour is what you have to wait, you can put uh, 3,600 seconds, that's your hour. Uh, so these are two ways in which you can ask solver to find a good but not provably optimal answer in case, you're, again, your problem is taking too long to solve. It's not going to happen to us here, but I just wanted to mention that to you so you know it. Uh, so then verify these two things. Now I'll click OK. And now we are ready to run this to solve it. And here we go. Okay, good. So let's take a look. We had a budget of a million nine seventy two hundred uh, thousand. We spent a million nine hundred fifty seven. So good, we're within the budget. We reached a million six hundred and seventy three thousand people. How did we do that? Well. Let's see. We chose to advertise on the two TV channels, number one and two. We did not advertise on TV channel three and neither of the magazines. We picked a social media ad, not the online store. Uh, a second social media ad, a search engine, and two radio ads. And this is the best use of our budget in order to maximize the exposure. Okay? Now... Why is this problem called a knapsack? And why did I say in the beginning that by budget I mean something abstract? Because you can cast a lot of different real life problems into this exact same format and approach it exactly the way we did here. So for example, uh, the problem is originally called a knapsack because you could interpret this as you let's say you're thinking of going camping and you have a knapsack or a backpack right that can carry up to a certain amount of weight so the budget could be how much weight are you willing to carry on your back the cost right so these things here the yes no decisions now instead of channels they could be items you could take camping for example a chair a rope a matchbox, a, a, a flashlight, and all of those things, right? So you list them all here. If you add them all up, they're too heavy. Don't don't fit on your back in your backpack. So you don't want to. You can't take them all. So for each of the items, you have a yes no decision. Do I put it in the backpack or not? For each of the items, you have a quote unquote cost. In this case, I'm saying it's weight. My budget is now a maximum weight amount. 
and this expression here is a total weight in the backpack. And what would be the reach version of this? It could be like the benefit. Oh, how useful would it be for me to have a flashlight when I go to this campsite or you know a sleeping bag and so forth. So for each item you could create a benefit score. And again you would be just maximizing the benefit subject to whatever your total weight utilization is at most the weight you can carry. So that's the nap the knapsack version of the problem. What else could you do with this? Well um, this could be your budget could be time, right? And these could be uh, activities. Let's say you're considering maybe uh, an auditing project, right? And so there are several things you could audit, maybe departments within a company or documents and so on. Each of them, you decide, should I audit this, yes or no? The cost could be how much time would it take me to audit that item? My budget of time. And this is a total time used at most total time available. And here, this reach number or the benefit number could be what is the potential uh, benefit uh, that I could get out of auditing this. Maybe I can unearth some problem and this has some benefit for my company. Right? Again, you could assign a score to that. Another example is that this budget could be weight or space, right? Uh, for example, in a space mission, right? You're, you want to load the spaceship with a bunch of things. A lot of these could be, besides equipment for the astronauts, these could be equipments for uh, putting together an experiment that you're going to run, a scientific experiment you want to run when you're out in space. You can't fit all this equipment on the ship, so... It could be for space considerations, also weight. Uh, so this is, could be the space they take up, space I have, and this score could be the, the benefit of carrying that equipment with you. Another example could be you're putting together, um, a, you have a ballroom where you want to set up activities like a casino, and uh, each of the games that you put on the casino floor, right? is a yes, no, they take up some space, and this is your total space, that's the benefit of having a table of that sort over there, and so on and so forth. So all of these types of examples are examples in which you have a bunch of things that you would like to do. You can't do them all, so each of them is a yes, no, and they consume some limited resource, and they provide some benefit. And there are several stories of that type that boil down to the exact same math and Excel model that we just put together here. So this is a very versatile problem that can be used in many situations. What I want to do with you next in the next video is to uh, take into account what we call logical conditions. There are extra requirements that we impose on binary variables so that we can model things of the sort, if this happens, then this other thing also needs to happen, or a mutually exclusive situation of the type, if this happens, then this other thing cannot happen, and so on. So we will do that together in the next video. And until then, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.